the studio in Nitro, West Virginia. This is Unreasonable Down. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt, and a lot has happened in the last two weeks. What do you want to talk about first? You tell me. What do you want? All right, let's talk about Coach DeVries. Have you heard his voice since the microphone was going in and out when he was introduced as the new head coach? I mean, there was like some videos same day of him in the building and Tony catching them and some kind of quick interviews, but that's it, right? I haven't, I haven't heard the man's voice since, what is that? I guess that was April, late March. Um, I have seen him in pictures. So, and he, and I know he's working because, and we're going to talk about the additions to the roster. I have not heard his voice on on any radio show in West Virginia, in Cincinnati. Definitely not a public guy. But what I can tell you about Coach DeVries and his online behavior, he's actually teaching me. <laughs> he's coaching me. He's coached me up on paying attention to his Twitter or his X account. The man, I wouldn't describe Coach DeVries solely on X as an online guy, but he knows how to use it in that right now he's, he's recruiting and bringing guys in and a staff is recruiting. And when he knows somebody's coming in, he will tweet the cartoon Mountaineer playing a guitar caption Q country roads. And you know, there's an addition to the roster and I'm not a notifications guy. Are you a notifications person on on the Twitter, on the X? I mean, first day of NBA free agency, I'm following Woj and I'm following Shams. Outside of that, I don't I don't really want to be notified. I'm an older person. But when Coach DeVries posts like every four days, and I know more guys are going to be added to the roster. I have followed, I have turned my notifications on for DeVries. And there's a strong chance if he if he tweets or if he posts, that is going to be the cartoon. And West Virginia has got another guy on the roster. Uh, I think Lil Wayne said it best, real G's move in silence, like lasagna. And that's the that's the impression I have of Darren DeVries. He's a real G. If the criteria for a real G is that is that he's moving in silence. Now, Kendrick Lamar and Drake, they are not moving in silence. Since I've been recording this podcast, there's been three more diss tracks. It's, it's really, I don't think those guys like each other, but it, I haven't heard of I haven't heard from DeVries. I haven't heard Chester Frazier say anything. Uh, but he's online posting white man can't jump pictures. Nelson Hernandez, the new director of player personnel, he's got a burner account on X where he's the biscuit world enthusiast, which is just like the blueprint for how do you endear yourself to a fan base is everybody likes this place. This is West Virginia. I'm going to, he probably for real has never heard of the biscuit world and popped in there and was like, this is amazing, but he could have made that up and it, and it doesn't matter. So the, for all future coaches that don't have any experience in West Virginia, when you get to West Virginia, do <laughs> just say something about, uh, I'm trying to think of another thing. Tutors is the best move. So you can just, Nelson Hernandez has laid the blueprint here, but or laid the foundation, but you can do exactly what he's doing. Like you can just copy and paste his tweets about his experience at the biscuit world. Him calling it the biscuit world is such a, a an amazing move. It makes it feel like it's a, like Walt Disney world and uh sea world, like these great places that mean a lot and tutors does mean a lot, but now for me, it's not tutors. It's the biscuit world. So just step one, come to West Virginia. Step two, say good things online about the biscuit world. Step three, be 
universally accepted. <laughs> so they're bringing guys in. It's amazing. The transfer portal is closed. Every scholarship player from last season's roster, with the exception of Offrey, is either out of eligibility or continuing their college career at a school other than WBU. For sure, there's an Akron pipeline. Apparently, there's a Kentucky pipeline because uh, the next Mountaineer to Wildcat move is Kirk Creesa falling in the footsteps of Trey Mitchell and Oscar Shibwe. Pat Sumnick is going to DePaul. The other guys are in the portal still figuring out their next move. So that means with Offrey as the lone returner, that means 5% of the minutes and 3% of the scoring is returning from a 9-23 and team. Uh, is This is what we all should have expected, I and I pretty much expected, full reset. I mean, just take the etch a sketch and just shake it violently for two minutes. That's that's the reset we have here. And uh, love and respect to all the guys that I, I'm. I don't want to say all that again. You know what I've said about that. Hopefully, you feel the same way. I think this is the right thing for the program. And so two weeks ago when I talked to Ethan Bach, it was Tucker DeVries, coach's son, and K.J. Tenner, a freshman. Those were the two guys that were new guys. So uh, since, since I talked to Ethan, West Virginia has brought in five additional guys to the roster and more to come. Uh, and so the five so far... Two guys from Illinois brought in by assistant coach Chester Frazier. And not knowing a ton about these guys' game, like how they play basketball, name-wise, it's going to be a a very solid name year. We've got Sincere Harris, who's a guard, uh, a guard with length, and forward Amani Hansberry. So we got Sincere. We got Amani. Those guys have multiple years of uh, eligibility remaining. High ratings coming out of high school, kind of waiting their turn with the Illini. Now we'll get their chance in Morgantown. And then the other three guys are one-year guys. One year of eligibility. They're going to finish their college career in Morgantown. 6'8 wing Toby Akani. From the University of Illinois, Chicago. He also played two years at Duquesne. This guy had 31 against Drake. So I think there's definitely a, oh, you smoked us. Uh, You want to join, you know, you can't score 31 against us if you join us. So Toby's on the team. Uh, The Biscuit World Enthusiast had a connection with Fresno State's Eduardo Andre, 6'11" guy so our our only true big guy on the roster hansberry six eight and he's a post guy but this is our this is our only center eduardo andre and then the latest pickup was the most substantial outside of tucker this is javon small who west virginia saw last year because he played for oklahoma state played for east carolina before that he has one year of eligibility and he almost had a triple double against West Virginia in Stillwater. Those are the five that have come in. So now eight scholarships accounted for, five more available. I think we have three starters right now in Small, Okani, and DeVries. I would hope if they get up to 13 and, and get all of the all of the scholarships accounted for that of those five, two more starters emerge. If not, you know, what do I know? Maybe all five starters are on the team right now. Uh, But there's so many, as as, as we learn from talking to Ethan, there are so many guys in the portal. Even though the portal is closed, I mean, think of all the guys who have left WVU that have not 
done the picture of I'm committed. Um, and then picture 300 and some division one teams. So plenty of guys out there. May is going to be a busy month for guys being added to the roster, but you've heard my take. I think, I think this coaching staff has some real G's. I feel confident in saying these guys are real G's. Now, how that translates into a uh, a win loss record in 2024 2025 it feels early for that but i can vouch for these guys the they're they are showing behaviors of a real g what else has been happening in the last couple of weeks nba playoffs are in full swing NBA playoffs, I'm in. I'm I love basketball, so I'm in for NBA playoffs no matter what. Just feed me. You could have done Knicks Sixers for best of 21. Is that is that one of the ways to do it? Yeah, I guess you could have. Let's do best of 21. Just every yeah, it's, it wasn't every game. But for the six games, it was regardless of the ebbs and flows of the game. It was a one possession game with one minute left. And you had Jalen Brunson doing Jalen Brunson things. Um, I don't know how he can control the game at his size, but he absolutely does. Tyrese Maxey getting shot out of a cannon every play is just, it's fantastic. It's what. Sometimes I see on the internet, I'm not a big NBA fan. And I I think I could get them with Nick Sixers. I think I could, hey, watch game five and tell me if you if you like the game of basketball, but you say you're not an NBA fan, watch game five and tell me that you didn't enjoy that. You can't. And that was that kind of was on Deuce was guarding Maxi at the end of that game. So I I didn't like that feeling, but just watching Madison Square Garden in unison yell deuce. It's it would it it, the vibes are high. It's great to watch it. What the NBA playoffs has also done for me is affected my YouTube watching. I don't know how you consume YouTube. I'm there for specific reasons. I'm looking up, obviously, I'm looking up old WVU highlights. Especially this year, found myself watching the 2010 videos a bunch, the Final Four run. I'm there for comedy. I'm there for, I'm really into wristwatches right now. So wristwatch YouTube is absolutely a thing. But here's, <laughs> here's, here's the left turn. I've never heard of this. It's not, the good thing about what I'm about to tell you about is, uh, this channel does not have uh, advertisements. So it's it's one of those where it's content that I like and I don't have to wait for a 15-second commercial to happen or hit the skip button. None of these are ads. I don't think this guy can monetize his channel because he's, he's using NBA clips like – day of like the game's over within an hour he's posting a video the name of the channel that i can i couldn't recommend enough is at awful coaching a w f u l c o a c h i n g don't know this dude's name uh but let me just and i'm not going to play the video on the podcast i'm going to try to figure out how I can reach this person. I want to have him. It's my number one guy I'm trying to get as a guest. Here, let me just read some. This isn't even what he's saying. Let me describe the videos. It's this guy breaking down film, but picture a guy, um, like picture Lewis Black, if he was younger and cared a lot about basketball, pointing out all the flaws of what he's seeing defensively in a basketball game. Okay. That's the channel. And it's this guy losing his mind. He's saying things that aren't really, 
<laughs> that are very mean and making decisions about people based on what he's seeing in a basketball game. Uh, he cares a lot about the sport of basketball. You get to learn about basketball because he's pointing out how he thinks defense should work in the NBA. He's also done college clips. Like he's on it. I think he, it seems like he knows his stuff. Here's, let me just read. (laughs) And uh, you know me, if you've listened to this podcast, I'm rarely promoting things that I've seen uh, that aren't, uh, I'm usually only promoting sponsors, but I've got to shout this guy out. Here's, here's the captions or here's, what is it? Like the, Here's like a description of the video. I'm looking at, at Awful Coaching's most popular videos. Darvin Ham is why no one should ever bring a child into this world. <laughs> is that fair to Darvin Ham? Uh, no. Uh, it, does anything that Darvin Ham do uh, in regards to basketball make someone decide that they should not bring a child into the world? John Calipari is a human pile of vomit. <laughs> Poor Darvin Ham, who just got fired here recently from the Lakers. Darvin Ham is why life is not worth living. Uh, the Lakers defense against Jamal Murray needs to be investigated. These are the most popular videos, and a lot of them are focused on Darvin Ham. Uh, Doc Rivers, lifeless, pathetic, poorly coached offense. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nuggets trash can nepotism coaching. Doc Rivers is ruining the Bucks, and this guy has to be a Knicks fan because here's the Tom Thibodeau's defensive genius. OG Ananobi is the single best defensive wing in the NBA, and it's not close. Uh oh. Also, LeBron James needs to leave the Lakers immediately. <laughs> Uh, Pelicans brain dead, idiot coaching. So very hot takes, very mean things, but it's, I'm learning about basketball and I'm getting a guy screaming at the top of his lungs with his edits. Like as he's done screaming and the play is done, there's like a couple of seconds in between the play being done and going to the next thing. And you hear this guy catching his breath, which makes me laugh. Every time I can't recommend it enough. Uh, if, if you're against somebody being mean online, this is probably not for you. Uh, at awful coaching. If you're, if you're into that, (laughs) it makes me, uh, a devoted, devoted watcher. And thank you at awful coaching for the work that you're doing. Check that out. We're going to a bi-weekly schedule in the off season. Real G's move in silence, but when you're moving in silence, it's it's uh it's actually a good spot. I actually I don't I like the silence, but that also is a factor in me pushing to every two weeks in the off season. Cause uh and there was a ton to talk about last off season. Remember, gang? So it's it's nice change of pace. And so I'm going to the bi-weekly schedule in the off season. Thank you for listening. That's it for this episode of Unreasonable Doubt. Listen on all the platforms, including YouTube. Like you could listen to this on YouTube, but first watch, watch an awful coaching video. (laughs) Person be absolutely insane. Until next time, I'm Josh Witt. This has been Unreasonable Doubt. WVU for the 2024-2025 season. They have zero wins and they have zero losses.